everybody, and thank you so much for being here. Um, my name is Jordi, and I am from Barcelona. If you guys go there, you will observe that 50% of the male population is called Jordi. So it's very annoying, and that's why I try to travel around the world just to be there as little as possible. I'm going to introduce you probably the best chatbot that was ever conceived, which is HAL 9000. If you think about it, this is, and you've seen the movie um, Space Odyssey 2001, this is actually one of the first chatbots that was ever um, conceived because it's someone that you can talk to, you can get an answer from, and on the way the guy killed most of the sheep that was, the guy was supposed to, to, to take care of. But that was true AI, and, and that movie was recorded in 1968. And by 1968, um, some people thought that by 2001, you could have a machine, a computer, a software as intelligent as HAL 9000 who can talk, who can speak, who can read lips, who can play chess and kill everybody in, in the meantime. So um, that's how 2001 looked for people in 1968. And I'm going to show you here how actually 2001 looked like. <laughs> this is this is the most intelligent thing that you can find was Clippy in, in Microsoft, which is needless to say far away from what we would call um, artificial intelligence. So what happened there? Well, there was a, a hype that was a big disappointment on the entire artificial intelligence um, um, community on how actually intelligent the technology actually arrived. And um, that, you know, probably you guys have heard about that several times, but that's what caused um, the AI1 winter. So the excitement just went down, all disappointment, funding was gone, and basically no one cared about artificial intelligence. And I know that because I created um, Inventa back in 2010 pretty much, and it, back then it was like, yeah, sure, you do artificial intelligence and natural language processing. Um, nobody would care. We would call it semantics or intelligent search, but the AI was still living their last stages in, um, in the winter. And then that happened. It's like, hey, actually, let's revisit some of the things that were popular in the 90s, and um, let's try to see if we can find an algorithm that is able to tell from pictures if um, there is a cat or a dog. It looks like a stupid um, exercise, but actually, if you think about it, it's very difficult for a computer to tell if an image contains one of these two um, animals. For there's, there's a couple of other entities that are very good at detecting that dogs and cats, which are dogs and cats. They know very well what, um, you know, which animal they're looking at, and um, for as humans, we are, by definition, pattern matching. So we can, even if there is only part of the image, we actually can recognize the entire picture. For example, if I show you this picture here, and I would tell you, um, um, what animal is that? It's a zebra, right? So because we are, we only need part of the image to actually discover that actually this guy is not a zebra. <laughs> this thing is called okapi, but we don't see okapis every day, so our neural network is trying to automatically give an answer that is, that is wrong. And that's basically how our brain works, and this is basically what artificial intelligence is trying to solve. This is what I call the pyramid of artificial intelligence. And to me, it's built on these five layers. If, we, if you could, could go now back to the 18th century and you would show a, a calculator, these guys would say, oh, this is artificial intelligence. And now, when you are playing chess with your iPhone, um, you don't think about that as, in terms of artificial intelligence, what it, it was. It, it, it was, you know, reading uh, a car plate when it goes all the way for the highway, um, that is artificial, that was artificial intelligence and is not artificial intelligence anymore. So this is that the layers start with computing, 
then automation, and then we have this, what we call narrow intelligence. And if you think about it, once the application hits the narrow intelligence layer, it bounces back. Every, every application that we see out there, we go um, semantic search, uh, we go um, GPS and, and, and location, all these applications, we don't call them artificial intelligence anymore. It just go and it bounces back. And look at this John McCarthy quote, as soon as it works, no one calls it AI anymore. And we are talking about 1956 here. So it's a real old quote, which is still valid today. So what we're waiting for is for the level two, the general intelligence. Who has done it? Nobody. No entity, no artificial intelligence is today able to reach that level, the level number two. We are not there yet, and honestly, nobody knows when are we going to um, arrive. But what everybody agrees is once artificial intelligence is reaching the level two, right after is going to go to level one. Because general intelligence is as intelligent as human. Once we reach that point, the next step is going to be entities, computers, software that's going to be more intelligent than, than us. I want to talk about um, natural language processing, about the language, what we humans um, speak. And I would like to, you guys to take a look to this sentence on a red box and then read the ship a book to France sentence and then read sentence one and sentence two. And you, I would like you guys to tell me what is the most similar sentence to the red one, the one or two? It's two, right? And yet, if I am a keyword-based search, or even if I am a machine learning, it's like, come on, you gotta be kidding me. This one is so close to it, and yet we know that is not true, that the actual answer is number two. And likewise, if I take a look to this um, other sentence, it's like the opposite, right? Like, instead of ship a book, we say book a ship, and again, um, the, the right answer is number two, even if there is such a similarity. So that's what makes artificial intelligence particularly difficult for natural language processing. What, it, what makes us human is language. We can see dogs, we can see cats, but many other animals can do it. But when it comes to speak a language like English, um, there's no one that can do it at this, at this point. And to me, we have also this pyramid that we have to go through in order to really go after um, real solution on, on natural language processing. So we have keywords. Everybody knows keyword-based search. It, it was very often is the only one you can find in many companies' websites. Uh, but at least we need to order syntax and understand semantics and understand the context. And, and on the top of the pyramid, there is not only the language itself, it, it, it comes necessary to know the knowledge of the world. And if you look at the sentence about ship a book to France and international shipping policy, um, we know that the right answer was number two, just because we know well France and international are somehow related. We have that knowledge and it took us many years to acquire it and at this point Machines, of course, are working on that, but you know, going through all these layers of intelligence when it comes to natural language processing is uh, really hard. When we reach there, when we go to level number one, having solved all the other layers, we will be able to say that that's actual artificial intelligence. And that's particularly important for chatbots. There are many companies out there offering chatbots, um, promising chatbots, there's a chatbot mania, not all of them have the minimum quality in terms of artificial intelligence and natural language processing to really um, offer a good service for the customer. And that bothers me because if you know, there's so much over-promising when it comes to chatbot, um, we know what it might, it might happen. It's going to be a disappointment in the industry, it's going to be a really potential winter coming. So that will be my, my message here. Um, when, it, when it comes to deploy chatbots, let's make sure that we don't overpromise. that we use the technology that is there, that is available, there's great things out there, um, natural language processing, machine learning, all of them can help us, 
but really, I would love to prevent another winter to come. Is there any question for you guys out there? I have official permission to answer two questions. There, there is a guy there with the light. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's been a question about how to make it to. Uh... Where is the microphone? Hey. So in regard to uh, general intelligence, do you think that uh, technologies like uh, unsupervised machine learning in the context of things like uh, word embedding to get uh, semantics in automated way, is it something that you would uh, put under that umbrella of general intelligence or is it not there yet? Because it's unsupervised and it's uh, universal, generic, it's not uh, domain specific? That's a good question. And I, let me rephrase it. Is machine learning going to help us reach the um, general intelligence? And the answer is, I don't know. Um, but there's something that I know. Um, we know that machine learning has um, achieved immense success in problems like Go. The, the, the game um, is like a it's chess, but just bigger, right? And, and, and now we have Go, and AlphaGo from, from Google actually was able to um, win some of the champions on, on, this, on this game. But I'm going to tell you something as well. Machine learning and deep learning was also used to play chess, our old friend chess, and with very disappointing results. The deep learning never was able to actually win even the simpler rule-based um, old chess game. Um, so that, that's a lesson, I believe, um, that we don't have yet the one solution that will bring us to the, to the problem. We are trying to, we see a problem, we find a solution, there is, there is no general method for, for intelligence that will bring us there yet. And um, of course, I'm looking forward to um, finding that um, one day. And you guys, if you want to know more about natural language processing and chatbots and how we can help customers actually decreasing dramatically the number of incoming calls or emails, we got a booth at Inventa over there, booth number. 12. It's going to be great, and we show you a lot of customers using our, our technology. I don't know if there's any other question over there. You do have permission for one more. Okay, that's good. If you don't ask the question, I'm going to ask the question to myself. Is the world going to end because of AI? Hell no. Is is a tool. It's like, it's like thinking that hammers will... will take over the world and kill us, or cars will eventually kill us. Well, sometimes a car can kill a person, that's, that's true, but I don't, I don't think at all that AI is, is uh, something that we have to fear. To me, it's something that we have to look forward because that's going to free humanity from doing repetitive jobs. Every job that out there is boring and repetitive is going to be taken over for, by AI, and I do believe that's good news. So thank you so much for, for your time here today.